Hey guys, this is Steve Huff from stevehuffphoto.com. I'm back today with another flashback, a, a look at a lens I reviewed long ago. I believe it was 2015 over at my website, but I never did a proper video for it or shared images here on YouTube from the lens. I feel if you review a lens here on YouTube, you really should show images from it instead of just talk about it. So I'm gonna take these old photos I shot back then and share them with you. You may have missed my review. I'll include the link in the description. Right off the bat, this was taken in the Palouse uh, with the 51.5 Voigtlander. This is a beautiful lens, comes in at under $800, $779. These were all shot on the Leica M240 back then. This is an M mount lens. You can use it on any M or you can use it on a Sony or other cameras like a Fuji via adapter. This is a portrait wide open at f1.5. This is kind of the kind of rendering you can expect from this lens. And while it doesn't match the Leica 51.4 Sumalux, it gets mighty close. It gets like 90% there, except your bouquet is going to be a little different. That's the difference with these lenses. And that's part of the reason why many of us pay extra for some of the Leica lenses. But this lens is superb as it is. Wide open at f1.5, your subject is going to be very sharp. And this lens is amazing for black and white. Look at the black and white tones here out of that Leica M240, which was a fantastic camera. It really was. Um, but the black and white looks great. Here's one of me back then. So this is what I looked like three, four years ago. Clean shaven, a little younger, in better shape. I wish I could go back in time. But... <laughs> This lens um, is really, actually, was that, yeah, that's on the M240. I had the EVF attached. I was like, wait a minute, what is that? And here we are in Tombstone, Arizona. Went to Tombstone to visit for a day, and this guy was riding down the street. Uh, it's kind of like a tourist attraction where you can get in and ride around the Old West like you were back in the Old West. I took this to show the subject separation from the background. Uh, this was in a cemetery and you can see that the subject here is sharp as a tack and the background uh, kind of fades off into the distance. Now the bouquet on this lens is not the best. It's not my favorite and there is some barrel distortion with this lens right out of the camera. But at $779 you're getting a lens, a fast prime, beautiful build quality, sharp wide open on your subject and a great color as well. Here I was focusing on this lorikeet at the zoo and I knew that background of trees would be a great test for the bouquet of the lens and it doesn't look too bad. It looks kind of interesting actually. You get maybe like 80% modern and 20% classic uh, the way this lens renders but look at the color on these chickens that reddish magenta uh, on the chickens look beautiful and striking next to their white color. Um, here is an image of a girl. We were in the Palouse. We were on somebody's farm and her family owned the farm, I believe, and she was liking getting her picture taken back then. She loved it, but except I missed focus. And I don't know if that was me or the rangefinder because I did drop my M on this trip and it was traumatic. Here is a nice, uh, showcase of colors as well as depth of field beautiful colors the dynamic range of that m240 was not too shabby and i kind of love the way that sensor rendered uh, and this lens really worked well here's a good guy an amazing guy we called him the most interesting man in the world his name is sarf amazing smart man owns several patents smart smart individual and fascinating to talk to and have a conversation with he was with us in the palouse Here's the beautiful Palouse landscape. If you ever get a chance to go to the Palouse, uh, you should go. Um, I did a workshop there. I no longer do workshops. I haven't done them in a long time, but that was an amazing time, a beautiful trip. And this is almost right out of the camera and everybody was trying to get this scene. It almost looks surreal um, with the emerald green colors and that sunset and the, the rays of light. Uh, it was pretty surreal in person and it looks pretty surreal in the photo. Um, here's another image, just an old abandoned house in the Palouse landscape uh, shot and I converted it to black and white. 
Um, but this lens, like I said, has really beautiful build quality. It has a knurled focus ring at the end of these images. I'll show you a close up of the lens, but it feels great on the camera. And again, it's for those who don't want to spend 4,000 on a Leica Sumalux, uh, and instead you want to spend under $800 and get similar performance with a little bit different kind of draw. It's not going to render exactly like a Leica lens because it's not a Leica lens. Check out this kitty cat. He was sitting there in front of the door, uh, just chilling out. It was kind of a rainy day. I think he was cuddled up trying to stay a little warm. Um, we were here again on another farm and uh, this was another guy who was there. Uh, taking part and on the left out of focus is the farmer and he took us around the farm and let us take some Images and some of us got some really unique images But this one you can see the rendering in the background and what to expect this was indoors And I don't remember where this was. I do remember where this was This was at the birdcage theater in tombstone, Arizona It wasn't very bright in there. So I was kind of seeing the detail I can get in the lower light and uh, again black and white looks really really nice with this lens at under eight hundred dollars for a leica m mount it's going to be kind of tricky to find something that's really good i mean there's so many choices in that 50 millimeter range voigtlander makes the 51.1 but i prefer this one it's smaller it feels better in the hand uh, it just has a quality vibe with it and i feel the color could be a little better, but it's been a long time since I shot that 51.1. Uh, that was one of my first reviews on my website uh, a long time ago. Again, here's an outdoor scene in Tombstone. Come and get your sarsaparilla, the best root beer in the West. You know, when you take photos you, you and you look back at them years later, it brings back those memories and those times when you were at a cool place such as Tombstone. I forgot about a lot of these images until I started looking over them and I said, hey, I never put these on YouTube. A lot of people may have missed out on this lens and it really is fantastic. It's something to take a closer look at. Tombstone Bordello, uh-oh, it's actually not a Bordello. It's a bed and breakfast and uh, the house looked really, really cool. But when I go to Tombstone, there's these little cabins I stay in just on the outskirts of town and you get your own private cabin, they're really cool. Here again, feeding the lorry Keats at the zoo, shot at f1.5, wide open. And as I've said many times, when a lens is, when you have a fast prime, they're kind of made these days to shoot wide open. They're not just for low light, they're for effects. If you want an artsy style to your photo, who knew that a picture of some leaves could look so artistic? Now this is not an award-winning photo, it's a snapshot and a test shot to show you the bouquet and how busy it might be because sometimes these lenses offer very distracting and busy headache inducing bouquet. This one's kind of borderline between um, very, very good and not so good. It's in the middle. I'm not a huge fan of the bouquet, but it's not offensive. Like look at here, you can see the subject sticks out. Um, the lens has like a medium contrast going on. You can up the contrast in processing, of course, but right out of the camera, it still looks fantastic. If you wanna see more depth of field, you can kind of see in the center, uh, it looks a little different than the sides, but you have some kind of old school vibe going again with these Voigtlanders. Um, but either way, it depends on what you're looking for in a lens. If you want perfection, if you want crisp, if you want sharp, if you want the smoothest bouquet, look to Leica, but you're gonna pay a fortune for those lenses. Leica makes some amazing glass, but don't discount Voigtlander. Voigtlander, a lot of people think, oh, they're cheap or, or they're no good. Now, a lot of the older Voigtlanders were a little soft and some color was off, but lately, in the last few years, Voigtlander has upped their game. So they're really good lenses, guys. A lot of people ask me, APS-C versus full frame, what are the differences? Basically, yeah, you're gonna get great IQ from an APS-C image quality uh, and full frame. The differences are, are pretty easy to talk about. Here's a shot with the M240 and the Nocton 51.5. Uh, with a full frame, you're gonna get a little bit more dynamic range usually. You're gonna get a much more shallow depth of field. You're not gonna have a crop uh, to worry about so you're not going to say oh I'm going to shoot a uh, whatever lens 35 but it's really going to be a 50. Now here's the same shot with a Fuji XC1 
and the Zeiss 3218 at f2. Uh, here, the Zeiss, the Fuji shot is nice, but it looks a little flatter because I don't have that shallow depth of field. Now this shot, this is the Fuji, looks very nice. It's Debbie one day and we're out to dinner or lunch. I think it was lunch. Uh, and you got some nice depth of field here. It's not too shallow. I think this comparison, I prefer the Fuji because here is the Leica shot. Now you're gonna see that immense blowout of the background, but both shots are nice. But I think the Fuji shot had a little more detail on the face, um, but you're gonna see a shallower depth of field with an equivalent lens on a full frame sensor because um, it's, it's kind of hard. Here I'm using the Fuji and a 32, so I'm getting the bouquet and depth of field of a 32, not of a 50. So um, this is with the Fuji, and the next one coming up is full frame. Looks totally different. Some will prefer the Fuji. This looks a little overexposed actually, sorry about that if it is. Um, but there are differences. It's mostly in the depth of field and dynamic range and low light capabilities. You can get great image quality from either. And here is that lens in chrome, which it's beautiful. You can also get it in black. I got mine from camerquest.com. Uh, it's available also at B&H Photo, uh, Amazon. And this is Steve, stevehuffphoto.com. I'll put the link to my original review in the description below. Thanks guys, thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoy this. Bye.